or else I think we we hit the but I hit the button, so we should be live now. But it's not popping up in my corner. Okay, we got Izzy. Hi, Izzy. Hi, Izzy. I'm so sorry. Going live on. Oh, here we go. Okay, so we've got it. Hey, everyone. How are we doing? We're doing good. How are you doing good, Heather? How am I? <laughs> I started reading this book. I don't even know. I should look at Goodreads. Like the second or the third of January. <laughs> Well, I, started it. I started it yesterday and um, somehow made it through it. Oh, we're going with somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and by that, I mean, I, um, I did text to speech for the first 35% and then I just started skimming and just swiping through the book to 85%. <laughs> Yes, you are a sassy little liar who did not really I read it. Into the suffering with some of us. It's fine. I just can't wait to hear anybody who did like it explain to me why they liked it. That's like what I'm looking forward to here. It's just like. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna let that comment pop up in a second. Um, so I guess we can we can start talking. We won't do spoilers first, but uh, this month we read um, "Love Unexpected" by Kibi Tyler, which was for um, God. What was our theme? Step Family. I literally have it pulled up right here, and I can't even remember. I'm a great host. I'm great at this. Twenty. <laughs> Real good. Doing real good here. <laughs> anyway. Um, I, Heather, do you want to go first and tell us uh, what you're writing? What am I saying? Your rating. My rating. It was two stars. Okay. It would have been a DNF without question within like the first 20% if it wasn't a side reading. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, you tell me your rating. Uh, I gave it one star. My full review was um, no, thank you. My whole That's review amazing. was there's a live show. You should come watch it. <laughs> a live show where I'm over here like staring into nothing. <laughs> oh yes, real, real good. All aboard the Hot Mess Express. That is me. That is me every day. Well, yeah, it's not me. It's you. <laughs> I put together over here decorum. What is put together? Uh, I mean, this is what pants are on the bottom. Um, every, I, I would like to hear what everyone else thought of it, who actually read it, who enjoyed it. I, I want to know full thoughts. Yeah, um, some people in Discord gave it like four stars, right? If I saw yep. any five stars. But also, I didn't go back and check, so. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of exactly. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tara loved it. Tara, can you tell me why? <laughs> All right, Tara. Okay, See so I guess how good you are. What? So we'll talk about like why it's taboo first because we're not really in spoilers just yet. Um, so Heather, why do you think this is taboo? Well, I think that sub family in general is taboo because of the fact that. A good step family is your family, right? They become a family member, even though there's no blood. So, obviously, to me, it's far more taboo, far more taboo to have a loving family 
that is actually working as a family unit. They've been living together for years, um, then suddenly switch roles. That's a whole nother level of taboo to me than two 18 year olds, their parents are moving in together and they're suddenly in forced proximity, right? So. Yeah. And I, I'll, I'll kind of like just soundboard off you. Um, so I, my parents are divorced and my stepmom is now my mom she adopted me um and she's been in our life since my sister was seven ish um so it's about the same age as the main character so what's really weird it, i think that right there what you said was like raising them like having someone i like personally having a family member who like was a step family has no relation to me i could not imagine anyone like the like the relationship, I don't see how it flips that quickly. Right, right, exactly. Plus, I feel like then they added in elements which maybe don't want to talk about yet. Where it's like, how long has he been feeling this way? Because we know that she's had a crush on him since before he met her mom. But at the yeah. same time, you just turned 18. You started this crush at 10. I don't understand how that dick takes, how that how that gives the course of life any meeting. Who doesn't have a random crush as a teenager that has no bearing on their adult life? You know, like, I don't get that. I liked it. Love Unexpected, Deb? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I think it went way too quick. About like a mile. It was so crazy. I would almost say she was too immature. Like it was I don't think she was mature either. I like I understand what you're saying. Like she seemed mature during the smut. Well but, like, I mean, also though, every time he was like backtracking which was every two minutes she was like well we can get through this together which is a mature thing but mm -hmm. that was it see i do that too though i mean my brain does like to be like this this isn't accurate and then that pulls me out that that bothers me but for the most part i go where the author takes me I don't care where, you know, what relationship you want to write. Who your end game, let's say in a fantasy book where you don't necessarily know who the love interest is going to be. However, it's your end game, like I'm along for the journey. I'll probably go where the author takes me. But, but, <laughs> I, I, I didn't believe it. Like this book, I just, I never believed it. Like this was not your reasons for being in this taboo relationship aren't big enough to overcome the taboo. <laughs> so you like the smut, but not the storyline that I go with? Izzy got to hear firsthand about this entire story last night. Yes. And I agree. I thought that our hero was immature too. Yeah. So much. Agree a hundred percent on this. Um, I guess we can go ahead and like go into like some spoiler stuff because this is like uh, pretty much exactly one of the things that I hated about this book. Um, so much. <laughs> so much. So I hated the way that she acted uh, because she was a virgin and you would not have been able to tell during the sex scenes at all. Uh-uh. Virginity was there for his fantasy fulfillment. Mm -hmm. What reason was there? Other than that she'd been having a crush on him all the time. But she'd done stuff with other guys. So there was no reason. Except for the yeah. fantasy. Yeah. Um, I thought. I thought the sex scenes were kind of unrealistic. To be honest. Mm -hmm. Like insanely under, 
and, and I couldn't get invested. There was daddy kink in this, and I was just like, mm. Mm. Well, <laughs> and my thing is, too, how hard was it to write two months later? Like, do some time jumps. It takes one yeah. sentence at the beginning of a chapter, and now you aren't doing all these sex acts within a week, which is, yeah. who does that? Who does everything there is to do within a week of losing their identity? And within, like, how long had it been since she lost her mom and he Two lost months. his wife? Two months. Which, this is a little factoid that deeply annoys me about this. Like, when you have a baby, right, postpartum, you're not supposed to have sex for six weeks. That's how long it was, basically, since they lost their loved one. Like, that's not a mass amount of time to go without sex. I mean, it's, a, it's long if you're in a committed relationship. That's not normal. Um, dry spell, if you will. But at the same time, like, it's not, it's not crazy to go two months without sex. And then two months after, like, you haven't grieved at all. There's, the, and they're talking about how they're, like, helping each other grieve, but they're not. They're just having sex. They're not, they're not talking about anything. It's not, and, mm -hmm. my, okay, so these, these, these are the issues that I have with the two-month specific timeline. Throw away all of the, they did all the sex acts too much, and then they moved it, all the things. But, before they start in those two months, they talk about at the beginning of the book how what a great mom she was and what a great wife she was and how she was the perfect woman. Like, they didn't have anything bad to say about her. The only th thing even negative at all was that she wasn't as um, free, I guess, and uninhibited in her sex yeah. life. Which again, so the virgin is more uninhibited. Like, what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're not um, we'll continue to harp on it. But so, like, so this was somebody that you loved. Both of them loved, right? And they're using their mm -hmm. guilt as a weapon against each other sometimes. But for the most part, it's like not even an issue. And I'm just like, you grieve a cat longer than that, honestly. Like, what? Yeah. We said this. That it's yeah. Gone. And the and the only other thing that um like the only other thing that could have been bad about the mom was keeping the dad from her. Like keeping her biological dad away. Right. But we never got an explanation other than the fact that he was a shitty human being. Criminal. We never got a single good thing about him. Yeah. So I wouldn't even say that was like a bad thing about like the mom. Like that would be the only other thing that I could see. Right. But again, every time it's on page, she's like, I don't want you in my life. You're not helping. You're making it worse. Her yeah. mom had been through that as well as knowing that he was dangerous to be around because of his profession, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and, and we talked about this, but P Patty's comment is like, if they they could have made this work really, really well. And I, th I think that's the issue that I had with like a majority of the story is just, it could have, like the concept is so good. And like, it could have been like a five star read, mm -hmm. but the way that she executed it, I just, it just did not work for me. Um, and specifically if she would have went to college or there had been some kind of like time, like time jump in the future, it could have really worked. Right. Because when her mom dies, she's less than a month away from high school graduation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So you're talking about she's going to college in what, four months? Yeah. It's perfectly reasonable to think that they lived in the same house for four months with nothing happening, like grieving. Well, is he not working a full-time job? I mean, I know he's the principal, but he totally had something to do in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> and, and she should be prepared for college slash, you know, if you read a regular new adult romance, then they are never, they're always out with their friends. So it's not like they just had to sit in the house for four months 
avoiding having sex with each other, it's perfectly reasonable to think that you went to college without that ever being an issue. And then they yeah. could, well, <laughs> you know, there's such, there's so much maturity that comes after they get 18. Just in your 20s. Just in your 20s. Yeah. We're not talking about the rest of your life. So the idea that this couldn't have worked four years later seems crazy. It, it, again, I think it just plays into like that wasn't his fantasy. And I feel like this was written to be the love interest fantasy, you know, like mm-hmm. the porn he watched, the things he was into, and then all played out perfectly for him with the happily ever after. But unbelievably. <laughs> uh, can we please just one moment talk about the fact there was a scene where they're, I think he, he, they're doing something sexual, and I can't remember exactly what it was. But he says to her that he imagined a baby sucking on her boob. And then he was just like, and she said, your baby? And he's like, my baby. And I'm like, you all have had sex two times. What in the world is happening right now? Yeah. And how weird is it? How weird is it? I mean, did neither of his other wives want kids? So he's been married twice for multiple years. And then he wants to have a baby with her within a month. But he hasn't had a baby with somebody else. That does like I feel like if you want kids in your immediate future and you've been married twice, it's probably already happened for you. You're in your forties. If you wanted kids and you were in two very committed relationships, you probably already did that step. A yeah. month into dating the eighteen year old. Um, I also want to comment because this is something that really threw me off. I feel like he could not decide if he wanted to be her dad or her or her or her daddy. Like I, I feel like he couldn't decide because he was so mad at the beginning yeah. when the dad comes back into the picture. Yeah, my and I'm like, why are you upset? Like, which one do you want? Do you want a dad or a boyfriend? I have that. I mean, that makes no sense, especially because. He didn't really know anything about the dad. So it's not like he was like, no, I know stuff that you don't know. It was just like, I'm her dad and her boyfriend. But I'm not giving up my dad's spot. But I'm her boyfriend. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Especially it doesn't make sense with the idea that you're flipping from one relationship to the other. So you cannot keep this one <laughs> if you want this one over here. Which one? Which one? Uh, they're talking about the baby on her nipple. Speaking of nipples, I would like to also comment on the fact that he, so this girl's 17. You're not missing much, I promise. Uh, sorry, Tara, I know you love this, but um, this girl, 17, uh, getting her left nipple pierced and two tattoos. With her fake ID. I, with a fake ID. Smoking marijuana. And <laughs> her obsession with marijuana cracks me up. Oh, um, but, but she literally flips her nipple. And I don't know if any of you know this, but that would hurt really bad. Mm-hmm. He does so many things that would hurt. And she's like, do it harder. And I'm like, I'm like, are you sure about that? And plus, how hard, I'm sorry. How hard would it have been to have a bottle of blue for the, for the final frontier? How hard would that have been? I don't, I, this is something that annoys me in romance books, quite honestly, is the idea that somehow it's sexier to do backdoor stuff without the proper treatment to make sure it doesn't hurt. Like, I just, I feel like this is common knowledge. (laughs) Like, this is common knowledge, and yet we're like, but these two love each other, so (laughs) they don't need it. Like, love what? is going to make sure that it, it goes in just smoothly. 
Let me just spit a little. I don't. I don't think that's. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Plus, exactly. Plus, they're always ginormous, right? They're always ginormous. Can barely get in the first door, but can easily without lube. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, um uh, my other my other favorite thing in this was they were about to uh do the deed for the first time as she was losing her virginity and he tells her to stop being a prude because it, and if she doesn't he will um go down on her back stairs uh with uh, until she cries and I'm like this is oddly aggressive for I'll someone's admit. first time all of this mind you also simultaneously every five minutes being like we can't do this never <laughs> mind sir like go forward be a dominant if you want i don't care but also then don't turn into a little pansy every two seconds and be like can't do this and so that and then okay and then with the look, look at the Bridgerton, right? And we're talking about how non-consent in a relationship and in a marriage on a man is still not okay. I feel like this should be obvious, yes? And yet they have not done anything. I understand that he ends up being like, it's okay. But they haven't done anything. They have no sexual history, right? And he is sleeping. And she's just like, well, I can't sleep, so I'm just going to climb on his face while he's sleeping. Well, they have had no... Did you get this part? Or did you read this part? I, did. I, I, was like, that part. I was like, what is happening? Like, you need to talk about this. <laughs> what is happening? And then I was... I, I, that was that was one of the things that just pulled me right out. I was like, what are we doing? He just turned you down five minutes ago. You're like, now he's asleep. So, this is my moment. I'm going to seize it. <laughs> he turns her down, and then she's just like, this. Not that. Wrong comment. Hold on. Is your comment looking here? This one. <laughs> yeah, she had already masked twice, and she still wasn't able to sleep. So her plan was, as a virgin, mind you, as someone with plan. almost no <laughs> sexual experience whatsoever, she's just going to climb on him in his plate and hope that goes her way. Oh. Who does that? Hopefully nobody. Swear to God. I don't I don't know anyone who is just like, let me climb on my partner while they're sleeping. Not even her partner no. That's the part that kills me. He's not even her partner. They've done nothing. And he turned her down that night when she turned and to she's do like, something. She's like, you turned me down, but I'm gonna do it anyway. <laughs> and then, but like, then there was no discussion of it. He was just like, what are you doing? Okay, hold on to the headboard. Two minutes ago, you were saying no. <laughs> I really liked the last 25% when there was a major plot twist. And the reason they had to, like, not be together was because... Um, it was because her dad had blackmailed and then he was like, I don't actually care about her. I want to actually ruin her reputation. But like, you can't be with her though. Like, what? I made no why sense. Why did dad all of a sudden care? I it was just, no I was so confused. Right, and what is his true animosity towards stepdad in that they don't know each other? It's not like they've, it's not like she's been going to her biological dad's house on the weekend for years than going back to her mom and her stepdad and her dad is like uh no like I'm not okay with you all of a sudden 
sexing my daughter now that her mom said like she shouldn't be living with you she should be living with me it's not even like that he doesn't even know her and he doesn't know the stepdad he doesn't know yeah. and yet the level of animosity that they have with each other right from the get-go which at the funeral truthfully i understand you have high emotional state you know they didn't have a good relationship with him. They didn't have any relationship with him. Her mom didn't want to be around the biological dad. He just shows up to the funeral, which, I mean, I feel like that depends on the person because everybody has the right to grieve. Also, you don't get to be selfish and crash on his funeral because you had feelings, you know? Yeah. Not that that was addressed or anything, but... Like they're so, okay, so things don't go well. You know, the emotions are running high. That's believable, but just the level of hatred that they had for each other for no real reason. And her dad, her biological dad, didn't try to get to know her. No, no, I so, feel like he tried to like buy her. Like, yeah, try to give her that like, apartment. It was yeah. like, say yes. And then no patience, you know, like, well, we can't talk for 30 seconds about it. Just like, oh, you said no. So, so I'm going to yeah. stick eye I feel on like it. the dad didn't try at all. Like, he was yeah. like, he's like the stereotypical entitled parent who thinks that just because he helped make the kid, he was entitled to the kid's time, even though the kid had, like, never known the parent. Mm -hmm. And, like, he doesn't care enough to like, even, like, try to get to know her. Right. I feel like they were all very flat characters in that this in the sense that the only thing we knew about them was their role in the plot. And it wasn't a good plot and it didn't make sense for the characters to have any of the motivations because we didn't know anything about the characters besides this sex plot yeah. <laughs> that we had going on. Like, I didn't buy into their relationship. There were no actual, real, good, healthy, on-page conversations between them. You know, yeah. if they were having a conversation, it was, you're so hot. No, we can't. You're so hot. No, we can't. Yeah. So what was this reason that they would go against public opinion other than the lust? There, I, I didn't see any reason. And how is lust worth, you know, blowing up your life for all intents and purposes? Yeah, um, this this comment, like, right. and then he tried to turn around and be like, I didn't say that. Right. I'm like, the, the dad was so annoying, like the biological dad. He was just, like, he was there to, like, push along the plot. And that's the only thing he was good for. And it, like, wasn't even done well. Like, it was, like... Exactly. It, I honestly do not have a redeeming thing to say about this book. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I got nothing. I have... Nothing. <laughs> and then I don't have any positive things. <laughs> Uh, something put in the comments because we got no I mean and then also okay so this bugged me maybe this is because I tend to be a fairly modest person I feel like I grew up um if you guys don't know this my dad is a pastor I grew up like where like modesty was like a big deal so I wasn't used to showing my body I, I just wasn't so as an adult, that was a little bit of a what's my comfort zone type thing. But at the same time, you're on vacation with your stepdad and your immediate plan is to wear a thong bikini. That to me was like, I was like, oh, seriously, we're going to start now. <laughs> like That was my reaction to reading about the thong bikini because I was like, you guys aren't there. You're not there. You should be so far away from actually <laughs> having a relationship. Even though, obviously, I knew that was endgame going in, I honestly thought that there was going to be, you know, a time jump or something. No, yeah. not much thing. But it's like, yeah. 
I don't know. I, like, I would not if you're wearing a bikini, your plan is sex. That's not not because you're on the Miami or whatever. I mean, you are in your family pool with your family member. That reason is there. Yeah. Um, I also would like to mention the fact that this is supposed to be an enemies to lovers and they went from enemies after to lovers to like four pages in. Right. It was like they it was like the only reason they were enemies was because they couldn't sleep together. So that was how they got their kicks was verbally sparring. Um so I've not read QB Tyler before. This was my first one. What about you, Heather? Mm, I've never read her before. I, wasn't um, like I, introduction. I would definitely be open to reading from her again if someone could point me into a direction of not this book. Somebody mentioned Discord, whatever her one that starts with un is like undeniable or untouchable or something like that. They said that one was really good. That this one was not at all her best work, but yeah. Um, uh, I really enjoyed um, Picture Perfect. I actually read that. That's another step for a new book. Um, what's the step relation? They're step siblings. Sorry, the dogs are barking. Um, but they're step siblings, and I thought it was hilarious. Uh, not a serious recommendation. But it was hilarious because she would say um, very weird phrasing. She liked to say the word slit a lot. Oh. Uh, and she would refer to the, the things that came out of her as honey. It was hilarious. It cracked me up. Writing a good sex scene is a skill that is greatly underappreciated. Like, you want to talk about the skill of writing book reviews? <laughs> the skill of writing a sex scene is a solid skill. Like, it takes work, I imagine, because the level of cringy ones that you can read sometimes, and it's just like, it's, do we have to come up with the most creative possible way to describe that body part? Can we not just like call it what it is. Like I'm like I don't have a problem reading dick over and over again. That's fine. I don't care. I don't need a different word for it every time it comes up on the page. You know? Like I don't. I don't need creative. If you have any step family, I'm gonna refrain from saying breathing you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the black fox is very hot smut. I did not care about the plot so much, but I grew up watching the black and white old Zorro, um, not the movie, the TV series. And I was into it. Okay, so I was like a Zorro retelling. Yes. And I did kind of like that. You know, she was into his alter ego and stuff. But same time, the whole plot thing, I didn't care so much about. But the smut was worth it. That was, a, that was a solid, solid daddy cake. I yeah. um, I really tend to like step sibling the best because it is more of an equal power dynamic. And when you already have a layer of taboo with the family aspect, I feel like it's kind of like, um, you know, student teacher type things. It's like the more taboos you add on, the more uncomfortable I am because I'm because I feel like it falls into more predatory behavior. Whereas if you just have yeah. run of the mill age gap, I'm like, who freaking cares? They're both adults. But you know, yeah. when you add more power dynamics on top of it, then I get more uncomfortable. So I think that step sibling is just a solid go to because they're both eighteen or they're nineteen and twenty or whatever. And I always yeah. like <laughs> But them two have not been in close contact with each other beforehand. I obviously love the Fallen Crest series by Tijin. Um, it's more sobering, it's less smut than I typically read. It's not quite fade to black or anything, but at the same time, a lot of the things are like a sentence or two as opposed to pages. Um, yeah. So I love that one. I love. 
I really like um, what's whatever the penalty word was was by. I have a notebook right here. It's fine. Oh, well, look at this. <laughs> what do you have? The enemies to lovers. Because uh, if you look at the Goodreads um, blurb, like that's one of the things. They're enemies to lovers, and I'm like, I don't understand how. Well, then also the interracial aspect didn't really play a part in the book at all, except that that yeah. was the point that he was searching. Leather only. Yeah. And it felt like it played uh, in the part. Ruby Tyler is an author of color. So. Right. Which is why I was like, okay, so this is a good way to add diversity because I asked around for diverse set family tropes or not tropes books and it was like they didn't exist it was like no we don't do this <laughs> that yeah. is a thing <laughs> but especially because i figured well surely you could have you know a gay romance with two step brothers you know i was like surely these things exist but i couldn't find any so <laughs> Yeah, there. Yeah. Are, I found so few. QB Tyler was the only one, and I didn't know she was an author of color until about a week ago. You mean so. a week before you picked her? What'd you, you say? You mean a week before you picked her? No, about a week ago, I found out. <laughs> you told me. Did you not? I did. No, I, I just found out when I posted that on uh, Instagram with all the authors that were uh, authors of color. <laughs> Hey Charles, what are you doing? We didn't talk about Sarah J. Moss this time, but um, she does. That was her pick. True. Okay, I'm not even looking at this bucket. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. What am I doing? I'm looking for family. I mean, obviously, I gave a bunch of Rex in the announcement video. Yeah. Uh, Heather did actually read the book. I'm the one that decided to skip like 40% of it and go to the end of it. Set Brother Dear is what I said. Listen, listen. Okay. I suffered through this book word by word, page by page. It was, it was not fun. It was not fun. And I made the mistake because, you know, I'm a total mood reader. The mistake of committing to multiple things this month where it was like, I have to read this book even if I'm like ready to do enough. And that was terrible. I was just like, oh. <sighs> All right. Do you have any final thoughts before we announce the uh, host for Tabitha Club? Any final thoughts? Um... I thought the fact that he was watching stepdaughter porn before his wife died was creepy and weird. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a lot. I... Let's see. There were so many different things that you could change about this book to make it work. To make it less taboo and better. Mm -hmm. Literally almost any aspect. If you change the title, if you change the happy family, how long they'd been a family, the fact that the mother was great. Mm -hmm. If she wasn't a virgin, if she wasn't 18, like if you changed anything, anything, it would have worked better. Like, and yeah, I really just felt like this was written as a book version of a taboo porn. It wasn't a love story. It wasn't really about the couple. It was just about yeah. the situation of the couple. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I think that um, I think the book could have really worked, and I'm really sad that it didn't. Honestly, I I had really high hopes for it. <clears throat> um, and I also think that um, I lost my train of thought. It's cool. gone. It's, it's no longer there. Just no thought that it'd be. Uh, I think that this is something that people look down on because they think that this is what the subgenre is, if you will. 
Yeah. And it's like, this is the only one that does like this. Like, all the others make it work a lot. More seamlessly. Yeah, and I think that is, um, I, I think that's a good point, too. Because I think some people hear that we read taboo books, and they're like, that's disgusting. And, like, they would read something like this and be like, absolutely. Like, that, it just reinforces that idea that they have. Um, whereas I think if you read something else, like anything else, it would be, like, a completely different situation. The entire point is that it was bad, like a bad book, because it didn't make it realistic for these two mm-hmm. people to be in a relationship. And it wasn't realistic. It made no sense. Especially when he was, like, so adamant about, like, I didn't groom her. I didn't do anything until she turned 18. And it's like, but the entire point is that this is your fantasy girl. A younger yeah. girl that's still a virgin. That's your stepdaughter. Like, that's what you're looking at. Porn <clears throat> for, so you can't tell me that that's not just your fancy. Yeah. I just thought that was yeah. a weird thing to mention in the book if you want him to be the good guy. I also thought it was weird that he repeatedly was like, this is a younger version of my wife. Mm-hmm. Like, or like you said last night, no, you can't. I don't want you to move out. I love you. You're the only thing I have left of her. And yeah, she's that was like, so she's weird. Like, what about your entire family? Like, you're fine. And he's like, no, you're all I have left of her. And then he didn't even grieve her. He just moved right along to lusting. Yeah. It just... Absolutely. Absolutely. <sighs> so, um, what is it? The whole thing I love reading about a couple is their interactions and then finding trust and I, I love that romance books are so often like okay maybe we're gonna have issues maybe there is going to even be a third act breakup that I don't enjoy I think that if you're going to have a conflict that um affects the relationship it's better to have it earlier in the book even if it's like 50 percent but the whole the beauty of it is like okay here's a person who's gonna have my back they're gonna have my back no matter what and I know that because of the love and the trust and the conversations and all the time that we had or I had an issue and like, I couldn't figure out how to communicate it to them and they still you know knew how to draw on me because they're my perfect match they, they, they are the person that works with all my weird edges right yeah and that whole that whole thing was missing from this book and that's, that's frustrating. That's not why I like to read. Yeah, I get you. Well, um, I guess it's time that we announce um, February's Time of Book Club. I hope that you all are excited. Um, does anyone have any guesses on who the host is going to be? A shocking twist. You decided to keep Heather because she did such a great job. <laughs> yeah, because Heather, in your announcement video, you talked about me and Jen having a full argument. <laughs> And that's why you are now the host. Listen, I so it's your favorite, and I intend to hold on to my title. I realize that you never actually said that, but so yeah, uh, it- I'm glad. I'm glad to return next. Time. I'm <laughs> I'm happy. I'm ready. <laughs> Uh, no one is shocked. It's Izzy. <laughs> I am appalled right now that Heather, she's the favorite, when Freaking I am obviously crazy. the favorite. I never beat you at anything. It's disgusting. I don't know why we're friends. Yeah. It's just, it's impossible. You're just like, I'm your nurse. Tamika, call me mom. It's just, you, you can't. I'm too fast. <laughs> You'll see me coming. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody looks down, they don't notice me. Just slip on in. <laughs> this is because you're so Yes. Exactly. This is my favorite thing. Listen, you go where we follow. So <laughs> Yeah, that's what she told me. She can't fucking find me in a crowd. It's fine. <laughs> oh you're I you're didn't read it. Bring it. You're I the told company. You. I told you last night that it was terrible. Why would you actually pick it up? I don't lie. Honestly, I think I really 
lived vicariously through y'all's reactions to it. So I was, I enjoyed that. <laughs> so thank you. You're I think I understood why everybody like, likes my like entertainment. all her things. Like I get it now. Because like I was living for your reactions and I was like, oh, this is why y'all like it when I read weird things. <laughs> yes. So um Izzy is going to be my co-host for February and we're gonna be doing BDSM. with him. Yes. My favorite. Um <laughs> my favorite. No. listen, we could we could have the three of us. I could, I could just all three of us be on a live Heather show is trying to inch her way oh. in as your steady co-host for Taboo Book Club. He said, <laughs> rotations? Fuck that. It's just me and you. <laughs> and whoever we pick. That's what I said in my announcement video. I was like, what? Maybe you should keep me. I can do this. I'm being professional. Be professional. Can you imagine me, you, and Heather on a live show every single month together? Nothing would happen. No one would have a live show to watch. It would just be chaos. No, I, I mean, BDSM is already going to be chaos, but I'm excited. I'm very excited. Uh, we're going to be reading Rebecca Weatherspoon. Uh, what's the book called again, Izzy? Hey, then. <laughs> it's oh one of my God. favorites. Here we are. I mean, blogging it. You suck. <laughs> I'm being attacked. We're both being attacked. Wow. I I'm so excited for that book, but like you it's should so let me funny. talk about it because I'm sure yes. I'll have Yeah, that. in the comments. This comment is literally what I did last night, but I jumped to 85%. And and I was like, like if nothing I could that screen and slap you right now, I would. <laughs> Who? Me? I no, this, me. This stupid book I read. A hundred percent, mind you. I'm going to read Haven anyways, and you're like, oh, let me have Izzy be on the live. You can be in the comments. In my defense, Izzy picked this book. I did like this book. Okay, right. asked, I, I said, well, anymore. this is one of my favorites. We can read this. Oh, no. I'm actually very excited. It's super good. Okay. It's definitely I, I romantic I what it's about. Why don't you be like, I'll shut up, and you tell everybody else what it's about. Okay, it's romantic suspense with uh, BDSM elements. She's in the run on on the run in the woods from a serial killer murderer person, and he saves her. Did you say serial killer? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't. Know, he's a murderer. A bad, guy. Person, but bad guy. Bad news. They're they're oh. definitely. Uh, I mean, it's type of book club. Check the sugar warnings. Um, but there's no rape or anything in this. It's just uh, some violence. Plus, didn't you say that if you like romantic suspense anyway, it's not really that intense? Like, if that's already what you read? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've read romantic suspense, you'll be fine. It's it's very much like romantic suspense with really, really great BDSM. Rebecca does a great job um, showing what BDSM should be. Uh, healthy BDSM relationships in all three of her books in the Beards and Bondage series. And it's all hot bearded men in the series, so can't go wrong. That is delightful. Are they, different, so. uh, are they different inks in every book? Um, Kind of, but most of it is generally like in the BDSM genre of kink. So book two, I don't remember all of book two. She's like on the run from her big job in New York from somebody and she goes to stay on this uh, apple Orchard in like upstate New York. Uh, that one has crossover with Zenny. If you've read Zenny, uh, the, the, be farm, the farm in Zenny is the farm in the second book of Beards and Bondage. And then book three is Harbor, and that one is a thruple and is about like um, their partners end up murdered or dead together in a hotel room and we're like cheating on them. And it's a really intense read, and she does it really, really well. It doesn't involve like them using each other to get over their grief. It actually involves them like this one. Together. So I highly recommend. I'm excited. That whole series. I love it so much. Um, the live show will be on the 28th of February. Uh, we've not set a time yet, um, so we'll keep you posted on that part. You got a preference on? I mean, yeah. 2 p.m. 
feast or works well for me. We're gonna we're gonna have to make sure Heather's not in the the right part of the private part of the Discord where she can guys, like I did. Guys, that's my birthday week. You're really gonna do this to me? Really? <laughs> and then include me in your group. Is the time of book club gonna turn into this? This chaos, me, you and Izzy. Y'all are not gonna make me one of these damn books. <laughs> What do you think? I'm not going to read some of these damn books that y'all read, though. Is he said absolutely not. No, thank you. That was my review. Exactly. I pulled an Izzy. I just right. circular referenced everything. <laughs> Feeling your stuff is not a personality trait. Mm -hmm. Watching stepdaughter porn is not a personality trait either, so. Thank you. That is not a hero make. Being shitty isn't a personality trait. I mean, it's just, there's a lot of things, you know? Hand tattoos are on the list. Yep. A nipple ring. That is a personality <laughs> trait. 100%. Totally a personality trait. <laughs> the only one. You can't only have both one. of them. You have to have one of them. The last okay. One. All right, we're going to turn into chaos if we don't stop. So, um... I I'm so excited to have Izzy on next month. Um, you I'm know so it's gonna be absolute chaos. Love Everybody's so excited. Uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll have a surprise guest. Not we might have a surprise guest. So happy, happy third person that is not me. <laughs> oh fuck it! I'm gonna find a third person to come on that's not you. <laughs> Just for the comments. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're screaming in the chat the whole live. Just one I'll long A. Caps lock on. It will be. <laughs> You'll be a caps lock warrior. Well, yeah. All right, I'm going to put the title in the comments. Well, it sounds like next month is going to be better than this month. So, so yeah, yeah, next month's book is Haven by Rebecca Weatherspoon, y'all. It's part of the Beards and Bondage series. And if you I like romantic friends or BDSM, even a little bit, there's a solid chance. I feel like I'm going to love it, so. Probably. I, I will be shocked if you don't like it, Heather. And also, honestly, if Tamika doesn't like it, I will be really surprised. Well, we won't know because Tamika won't read it until the 27th anyways, so. <laughs> yep. That is my oh, personality trait. Right? I books probably won't read it until like the end of the month either, so it's <clears> fine. <throat> I'm actually reading it early in the month. I already have it from the library. Like I said, it's going in a vlog. So you're welcome. Yes. I'm so excited. More vlogs. I love Rebecca too. She's so great. All right. All right. Well, um, thanks for everyone for coming out. Uh, I'm going to close up the live because we are coming up on an hour and I think Siri's going to talk try to talk to me now but it's fine um final thoughts I hated this book I hope next month it's better next month will be better I promise thank you Heather you are the best co-host I'm getting Heather. there I'm Heather. getting there definitely better the next month for sure better than two months ago I mean the best ever I will gladly put you in every live show that I have from now on. Heather, you're Thank amazing. You. I love you. Thank you. You're so sweet. So sweet. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I told my uh, right, husband. gets too full of herself because it's getting Listen. dangerous. I tell my husband that our kids get their drama from him because I am a very chill person. So clearly. I believe that. He's a young, okay. kind, compassionate. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm going to shut up. Stop. Stop. Okay. Well, thank you everyone who read the book. Uh, and thank you, Heather, for reading it and actually going all the way through it. And thanks, Izzy, for popping in so that we could, like, be funny. Uh, we'll see you all next month. I will be putting this stuff up in the Discord um, by the end of the day. So um, <clears throat> if you all have a preference on time, let me know. Because I want to try to make sure that international people can show up. Bye.
Bye. <laughs>